Okay, I'm working on my 2007 PT Cruiser, and we're going to be fixing the bumper on, over here on the passenger side. It is broken, and if you've ever hit anything, you can see this side is fine, but this side has like, hit a curve, and it's broken this down, and it's just hanging down here. It doesn't look really good. Um, now these bumpers are quite expensive and you can see that it's just a happens to be a weak point it doesn't take much to break that at all so we're going to fix this and uh, put it back together and it's going to look pretty good and it's definitely a lot better than spending three hundred five hundred dollars for one of these bumpers when it's otherwise in good condition so First thing we're going to have to do is get the bumper completely removed and in order to do that we got to move, remove the grill and, and some various other uh, bolts and stuff and keep up with everything. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Alright so we got the hood up. We've got these 7 millimeters to take out first. So we'll go ahead and get those four. There's those four out. Okay now with this grill to get on each side you push down slightly because there's some little tabs that lock and clip into place into these slots on each side so you push down slightly it'll pop out just like that do that on both sides now once it gets to that point you lift straight up because you got some little hooks under there and you'll need to lift those up and out of there so like that Sometimes these, like I said, they are uh, very fragile and they'll break and there's just nothing you can do about it. This plastic just gets old and brittle, so you just have to have to deal with it. <clears throat> so now that we've got that out of the way, uh, the first thing we'll do is put these screws back where they go so we're not losing them. And then we'll move on. Okay, now we come down here, we have a couple more 7 millimeters. We'll go ahead and loosen those up. And we've got one on each side. We're we'll going to get these out. Okay, now we're going to come over here to the side. We're going to focus our attention over there. Now, as far as underneath goes, there's going to be some little snap pop rivets, little plastic ones. Now, they're, they happen to be broken on this car, so... I'm not going to be taking any of those loose. All this has been run up over the curves and stuff, and hence the reason that that corner broke over there to begin with. So we don't have anything there. Okay, so we're over here on the driver's side. We're going to have to focus on this flap right here. And we've got three of these seven millimeters going into the front bumper. I like to use a little ratchet, a little micro ratchet. It works good keeps you from having to turn the wheels and remove tires and that sort of thing to get to this. So we're just going to take these three out and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. Alright, so we got those out and this flap is loose. Now we can get up here at this point and get to these tins just to show you those two right there you just need a 10 millimeter we'll take those two nuts right there off and I'm just using this right here and we'll just get up in there and get a hold of those and get those both loose and then that will go ahead and release this from this and like I said the other side is broken we don't we won't be uh, taking that loose and the only other thing that um, would be holding this in place would be the little plastic snaps that are under the bottom there so those are missing so this will release this bumper okay so that'll just pull that down if you come over here it slides into these nubs and that pulls that off of there and you can see that right there so this is completely loose it slides out of there 
if this side was bolted on and see this flap is missing but we would have done the same thing here remove that and taken these out so this is completely loose and um, we're gonna go ahead and like I said you should have some snaps and stuff under there but this one doesn't okay so the bumper is off the only thing left to do is remove the broken piece here and you can get a good view of how this is being held on here so there is just a couple of studs that come through here and I've seen those get loose as well and need to be tack welded or epoxy back into place because they just sit there and spin now we just need to pull this off without damaging it any worse okay so we're actually going to take this piece and we're going to see about how fixing that back to the bumper put this back on here and this will look pretty good it'll look a lot better than what it looks now and just to show you where these snaps if everything is like not broken and missing you've got like various snaps that bolt or uh, clip to other plastic pieces under there it helps hold the bottom part still I mean they're not really necessary but it does help to stabilize it but they're all broken off and you know without replacing all of this stuff uh, it just is what it is you know you run this up over a curve and this is what happens so anyways we're gonna go ahead and work on this and we may try to fix this as well even though it's not totally necessary we're going to go ahead and work on this okay so the first thing i've done is took some sandpaper and cleaned this surface up you can see where it's broken we've got this piece and we can <clears throat> you can see how we just need to figure out if we can get this back on to this surface this will look okay this bumper is moving around on me here but we just need to get that bonded back to there and then that will you know look pretty good <clears throat> okay now the first thing I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna be using this piece as well but the first thing I'm gonna do is cut me out a piece of pretty tough plastic and this is just off of another vehicle it's scrap and you could use metal if you wanted to you could get a piece of metal um, but this has a little more flexibility to it and give to it that I usually just get plastic because it's easier to cut it's easier to fit and it does have a little bit of give and flexibility but it is pretty strong as well this stuff is it's pretty strong so we're going to cut out a piece here and then we'll work on fitting it in you know something about this length or so and i'm just using we've got some vinyl cutters here we're just going to use these okay with well this angle piece cut i'm just holding it up here and i'm kind of getting the contour and i'm going to take a marker and just kind of mark it we're going to have to cut this thing down some more but you can kind of get the idea of what we got going on here okay so I've been whittling on this thing and I finally got a piece that I think I'm happy with here and I'm just kind of following the contour of this and you can see how it's kind of going to fit in here and you'd be surprised how strong a piece like this is but basically it's going to come in here and said so it's got a little flexibility for us and it's going to set in there like that and if we do have to whittle to get anything to fit up there which I don't think we will because I got about the width of this here so we shouldn't but if we do it's very easy to trim this 
and get an exact fit. So you can see with that sitting there, this sets, if it would stay still, this sets on here and that's going to be setting below that. So we're going to go ahead, like I said, we're going to clean these surfaces up and we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to the next slide. What I like to do is get this piece on here and then I'll take that other piece and set it on this take this piece it's I can't do this one-handed but I'll set it in the position and then I'll take my permanent marker and trace around this so I know the exact location that I need to have this piece before I fasten it so that's basically what I'm gonna do right now and then we're fixing to get this fastened up here by the way uh, take you a drill and drill this rivet out you don't need this piece right here it's not going to do any good at this point it's already broken loose this is basically a brace to make it a little more solid now you could take this off and put it underneath of this piece but it's not going to do any good on here and it's actually going to push this piece down so anyways we're just going to go ahead and drill that rivet out and get this piece off of here. Okay, so the only other thing I've done is took sandpaper to the side that I'm going to be bonding. I'll show you what we're going to be using here in a minute. I've sandpapered the sides that will be bonded. Same as here. You can see where I've marked the location because I don't want to get in here and this thing move and not have it in the position and then I have have it bonded so we want to make sure that it's in the position where it's supposed to go so we've got that and we've also took alcohol and we've cleaned up all of these surfaces that we're going to be bonding as well right so we got some epoxy here and this is JB Wells really good stuff you can bond just about I guess anything metal to plastic whatever you want to do it's really really strong <clears throat> and pretty good stuff it's a two-part epoxy so when you s squeeze this plunger you're gonna get equal quantities of this out we're just gonna mix it on this piece of plastic right here I got me a little scrap piece here for mixing and spreading it on to our surface so we're going to go ahead and mix this up and you're going to need some type of little baby clamps or something to hold it on here while it does set up and I like to just let this sit um, overnight that way I know it's good and strong before I go to messing with it or anything so some little clamps uh, and then some other scrap pieces so when we're clamping to the surface uh, we don't glue our clamp <clears throat> so anyways and you just have to clamp it the best you can but the idea is just to hold it in a place now the surface is clean it's been sanded and the same for the other piece that I'm bonding and you can see we've got it marked everything is ready to go in place and I just need to get it um, get my mix and you've only got you know five minutes to work with this you got to work quick and get it on there and they used to have some stuff uh, uh, just plastic weld that I used to use and it was really good stuff I can't find it anymore it's like it was like the best uh, as far as like you could just set it on there and it would bond literally in just seconds <clears throat> while you're sitting there holding it with your hand and didn't even have to clamp it or anything but I can't find that particular kind anymore so this is what I've been using so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna take this cap off here and we'll start to mix this up here so it just twist off and then we'll uh, squeeze it out here Okay, now I probably don't need a whole lot of this stuff, but the idea is I want to have enough. So this is the two part. Just mix it thoroughly. Get the 
epoxy blended together and just gonna, we're just going to slap it on there with this like a spatula. Don't mix too long or it'll just set up right in your hand here. <clears throat> just get it thoroughly mixed and we're going to go ahead and slather it on and get our piece in the place here. Okay, so we got it coated on there good. Just getting ready to set it into place. Go. Okay, so here it is and you see a lot of it's like squeezed out when I clamped it down there. <clears throat> but went ahead and put a piece on here to hopefully fix that don't know if it's perfectly in the position but I'm hoping that it's close enough there to get the job done <clears throat> but anyways we got this slapped on here so when we clamp this up this will actually look pretty good and I see people like using Bondo and trying to blend this and fix it by various methods and it kind of makes it look like a bigger mess than just taking it you know gluing this right here and being done with it that way you just have this little line other than that you really can't see anything so we'll just let it set up and we'll check back with it tomorrow and see how we're doing Okay, here we are after letting this set up all night and you can see how this is all hardened up and you'd be surprised just at how strong this stuff is I mean it's really amazing I think it was it said something on it about being rated for like 3,000 psi of strength really strong stuff and you notice how <clears throat> when I put it, th this patch on here, basically I run it down, you know, and you could run it down farther, I guess, if you wanted to, but just to give it a good surface to bond to there versus just having, you know, a little piece here. This whole thing is bonded right here, and this is really strong. And uh, also, when I put it on, I want to make sure that if anything I want the gap to be a little bit farther down when I bolt it up it'll pull it up nice and tight so I don't want it to stick up too high up here is the main thing it's plastic it will bend so you know just like about like that works really well and then I also like I said I put this little piece on here so we're going to go ahead and get this on the car here and just uh, we'll see how it looks now. So we just, and I was looking at my other PT Cruiser and all I seen under here was like their three uh, seven millimeter and their little flaps and I guess they get broke off. There's like three of these things here that are supposed to be there and that's the only difference that I could see under there as far as what it was a uh, what was holding it so said so the stuff under here is missing so and uh, those flaps kind of go underneath and fasten into this piece right here which of course that piece is bent under there as well anyways we're gonna go ahead and get it on here we'll see what it looks like now okay when you're setting it up here just get get it up here and get these slid in under these little nubs first and then go ahead and get this screw right here locked in that'll help hold it while we work this back area in okay and I'm pretty pleased with this little piece right here um, it actually lined up pretty good and I just kind of eyeballed it now I may depending on if I have any trouble with my grill but I'll see what it does. I may have to trim it and, and then again it may not work. I don't know uh, because the grill has to set into these slots and down into this groove. And if it kicks it out and it looks funky then I'll just take it back off because really this screw here holds enough pressure to hold it right here. But I just kind of wanted that on there as a little extra 
to keep it from falling off because that got broken when the other side that other piece got broken so we just pick that up and push those right into there nice and snug and it's not a bad idea to leave just get these started and leave them a little bit loose until you work in your bumper over here with your studs and stuff just so you got a little bit of slack yeah, so, so now we'll just get it started up here just like that and then we, of course we just reach up in here and get these started onto these studs and then we'll just do the same exact thing on that other side we've got the two studs on the other side and our new piece and we'll get this locked up here and then we just got our other, only other thing I've got here is this flap so the flap on the other side is completely missing but you got these three sevens that attach to it here <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and snug these down and tighten these three sevens and then I'm basically just gonna do the same thing on the other side and then snug these up and we'll see what what it looks like here okay it looks like it's lining up good the only I pulled it back here temporarily removed the screw I've got to go ahead and drill a hole through here and here so just got a small drill don't know what size just about the size of this hole right here and I'm gonna go ahead and drill directly through that looks like it's lining up really good okay so we drilled those through and I just made sure that my bolt hole location was okay and test fitted it and it's uh, working just fine so we're gonna go ahead and bolt that up now okay just show you what we got here this um, piece in here actually matched up pretty well and this is what it looks like over here which you know it's still not perfect because this piece got broken off but you know had this piece not been broken we could have pulled it up here and it would have blended in perfectly you know but um, anything that you probably do here is not going to be worth it short of maybe putting a little bit of bondo or some type of plastic feel or something and and just a little bit of touch up but i mean that's pretty good and it's solid now it's really solid it's not coming off of there and it's probably more solid than the other side is now but i mean just got the little the little line there and um it didn't really cost us much of anything to fix that and the biggest thing it's not hanging down anymore because it looks really bad when you got a dangling bumper there you know because that weak point broke so it's definitely not bad uh, not a bad fix and like I said these these bumpers are pretty expensive and if you get it painted and, and all that or if you get a paint to match bumper these things are like three to five hundred dollars so yeah if you can take a little bit of that epoxy and fix it up that's the way to go save a lot of money it's really not that big of a deal and the stuff that I've got um, I think that too may have been about five dollars seven dollars or something but I've used it for a lot of projects and I still got a lot left and it stays good as long as they're not mixed they stay good and it doesn't harden up so it's really good stuff it goes a long way so you can use it on a lot of other things too so anyways uh, that's going to conclude the video um, I hope you found it helpful and hopefully that can save you a little money there and uh, 
said if you found it helpful please give the video a like and check out some other videos and as always I invite you to subscribe and I thank you for watching